Super Mario Bros. 1-1 is one of the most famous 2D levels of all time. So famous, in fact, that not only is it the most used phrase in Mario Maker across all user-made levels, but Nintendo themselves included a version of it in the game story mode. So, how could a level so simple that takes most 30 seconds to beat take me nearly 20 hours? Well, it all started a few months ago when I was attempting a level-making challenge on Shrink. After playing countless 1-1 remakes across all modes of the game, I decided I wanted to make my own version using only my memory. Now, while the challenge was fun, it left me wanting more. I wasn't sure what exactly, until a few days later. Later that week, I was doing some poking around on Discord looking for fresh content to bring to stream when I noticed a new message had been posted in my content ideas channel, Super 1-1 World. Now I'll be honest, I didn't know what this was at first, but after doing some searching, I got my answer. An entire 8 world, 40 level super world, where every single level was 1-1. I was hooked. I put it on my schedule for the following week and eagerly waited, making sure not to spoil myself so I could get the full experience. The following week, I booted up my stream and eagerly got into it. After a short intro, I started up the timer and began my journey into what would soon turn into a one month long affair. So here we go, this is uh, Super 1-1 one, one World. Created by 1-1. One, one. I don't think that's actually the person's name, but you know, they have to make sure that they're staying in theme, so. Let's get this started. World 1 was fun and simple enough. Uh, it contains the original 1-1, one, 1-1, one. One, one, but it's made from memory, 1-1, one, one, but it's squished, uh, the bizarre, 1-1, one, one, but it equals zero, and finally, my personal favorite, 1-1, one, one, but it's an airship fleet. With only a few silly deaths along the way, after 10 minutes, I was already moving on to World 2. <laughs> Dude, I was not ready for it to all be on the screen like that. World 2 is more of the same. Innovative approaches on a classic level using mechanics you can only find in Mario Maker. It starts off with 1-1, one, one, but you're an SMB2 mushroom, which I had no problems with whatsoever. Okay, alright, so far so good. Don't go in the pit, though. Get the jump. Okay, let's go try again. Next was the mind-bending 1-1, one, one, but it comes in waves. A really unique 1-1, one, one, but it's spot the difference, where I had to find enemies and blocks that were in the original. 1-1, one, one, but it's a water level, and to end it off... 1-1, one, one, but... Now this... Uh, this is where my trouble began. This level is a 20-second speedrun level that utilizes the Lakitu cloud mechanic to go through the level quickly. Now, unlike the previous levels, where I had full control of my character, in this one, I was constantly being pushed to the right by this cannon. After a bit, I found out that holding right sped up the cannon and holding left slowed it down, but I was always moving right. This meant that if I made one wrong jump, it was over. Dude, what the heck? I pushed jump? Why didn't he- why didn't she go? And if you're thinking I could just go through the shortcut underground or stay behind the cannon, uh, those didn't work either. It goes back. <laughs> That's what happens. Fortunately, this didn't take too long to master. After learning how to control the speed of the cannon, I was through the level in just about 10 minutes. Nice! We've done it. First try, just don't look at the life counter. But this got me thinking. That was only World 2. There was another 30 levels and 6 worlds that I had to get through. If things were getting tricky already, I could only imagine what was in store. Nevertheless, I pushed onwards to World 3. Here, I ran into my next snag almost immediately. 1-1, one, one, but I can only look left. So we can only look left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I was not ready for that one. Now, the premise of this one was simple. I had to make it through the level without ever letting my character look right. Now, this might seem impossible, but in the original SMB theme, this is actually possible using good jump control. By jumping while facing left, tapping right while in the air, then tapping left again before landing, you're actually able to consistently move right while only facing left. However, one misstep and... No! Ah! Game over. It took me about 20 minutes to complete, but soon enough, I was done. It was here where I first noticed something that set off further warning bells in my head. Because the game lets you save your progress if you can't play it through at once, it actively tracks how far you are in the world. This is then displayed to other players on the same world by a ninja number. The higher the number, the more players who stopped playing the super world on that stage. Using this number, you can really quickly gauge the difficulty of each level. 
So, the fact that on World 3, not even halfway through the world, there was a drop-off of over 700 to under 75 didn't bode well as I moved on. That being said, the remaining levels in World 3 were very tame in comparison. The remainder of the world featured the minimalistic 1-1, but nothing is unnecessary. The confusing 1-1, but it's a maze. 1-1, but it's a scavenger hunt, and ended off with 1-1, but it's a surfing course. After I headed on to World 4, I began to doubt my initial concerns. Sure, a few of the levels had been hard so far, but maybe they were outliers. As I loaded into World 4 and saw that there were a few levels with over a hundred ninjas on them, it further helped to calm the nerves. However, World 4 quickly showed itself to be on an entirely new level of difficulty, with each and every level being surprisingly more technical than the last. This world contained a leaf parkour level where I had to reset P-speed on enemies as I moved forward. A surprisingly tricky spin jump level. If I beat this right now, everyone has to subscribe to Raise Fire on YouTube. Okay. A super unique 1-1 one -one that was broken down into four quick time attack sections. A 1-1 one -one speed run where I had to go through the level backwards, including the music. This is a hold left though, I don't like hold left. Wait. <laughs> Wait, it's <laughs> <laughs> when is the music playing backwards too? And finally, 1-1, one, one, but it's a shoot 'em up which I'm convinced is probably the only level in this whole game that uses the shooter tag correctly. At this point, I was already halfway done. Undoubtedly, the levels had increased in difficulty as I moved on, but wrapping up for the day, I felt accomplished in what I had done. Being able to complete 20 levels in under 3 hours? At this rate, finishing the whole world was bound to be a breeze. Coming back a week later, I was feeling energized and excited to dive back in. While tricky at times, the Super World had genuinely been a lot of fun so far, so I was eager to see what else it might have in store for me. Today was the start of World 5, the beginning of the end. World 5 started off with a similar challenge to an earlier level, a parkour level, but this time I was using the acorn power-up instead of the tanuki leaf. While I was able to get through this level fairly quick, it was the first time I had to change my approach and how I viewed each level in order to beat it. Sure, each level was technical as well, but at this point, I couldn't simply out-platform my way through everything. These levels were reaching a point where they had an intended solution, and if I didn't follow that solution, my chances of success were basically zero. That ending is... it's kind of hard to do. Honestly though, this is kind of just like... This level is like, imagine you're just... you're completing a, a puzzle, but in order to like actually solve the puzzle, you have to have the tech also figured out. It's like a tech puzzle. The next level in World 5 was more the same. 1-1, one, one, but everything is breaking. This level removed the floor of 1-1 one, one and forced me to jump from platform to platform using the Mega Mushroom. Now because of how jumping works with this power-up and interacts with brick blocks, this was again a puzzle to figure out just exactly where and how I needed to jump to make it through. It took a bit, but eventually I finished. Oh my god, that was a close one. We'll take it. Then I got hit with a curveball. Next stage, 1-1, one, one, but you're a rocket. 20 second speedrun. The levels I'd played before this in World 5 were tough, sure, but both of them combined would only be a fraction of the difficulty of this one. Now on the surface, the level seemed harmless enough. You're given a pee balloon and tasked with collecting all of the 1-ups floating through the stage. Fun, right? Well, that's what I thought too until I noticed the timer. With only 20 seconds on the clock, every single movement of mine had to be perfect. Even the slightest mistake would cost me the run. If I made a turn too wide, I lost acceleration after hitting a block, or I missed a one-up along the way, game over. This level would require near-perfect mastery of the pea balloon mechanics. So I got to work. It took over 200 attempts and nearly 45 minutes, but as my patience on this stage was beginning to wear thin, things finally came together. Caught up on the doula flotchers. Oh, wait, 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 gaming! We've done it! While I was relieved after getting this clear, the earlier fears I had experienced about this world the day prior had returned tenfold. I was only on World 5. These levels weren't supposed to take me nearly an hour per attempt. How was I ever going to make it through the entire super world? Did I even have the skill to finish the levels at all? Luckily for me, the remainder of World 5 was pretty easy, containing only a frog suit speedrun stage, which was basically a hold right level, and the final being a Bowser chase stage. Here we go, here we go, Th we're this part again, I swear to god if he hits me with another flame, I'm out of here. DUDE! Are you kidding me? 
What? What is this? Some type of game? What do you think this is? Some type of joke? Uh, both of which were tricky, but nowhere near what that pea balloon level had brought. Again, I began to doubt my initial fears. Were these levels really getting harder, or did I just happen to be really bad at certain mechanics? Either way, I had made it through World 5, leaving me with only 3 worlds and 15 levels to go. Regardless of how I felt, there's one thing I don't do once I decide to start something, and that's give up. So I pushed onwards and began World 6 as the timer neared 4 hours. The start of World 6 was a power-up dodging stage, a type of level that's really common across all of Mario Maker. This level, while tricky, was nothing too terribly difficult. The levels that followed were similar, a speedrun level where I had to kill every Goomba in 1-1, and a getting over it themed vertical styled 1-1. Maybe these levels really weren't that much more difficult, and I was just simply psyching myself out. Sure, I'd run into a few rough stages along the way, but I mean at the end of the day, it was only 1-1. How hard could a stage themed after that really be? And then... Uh, I got to this level. 1-1, one, one, but it's a bonus stage. Oh, I love bonus! Okay, I can't even begin to make this one seem difficult. This, this is literally just a bonus stage, guys. Going into the final stage in World 6, I was feeling on top of the world. In my mind, I wasn't even thinking about the game at this point. I was thinking about what I was going to be doing after. Because at this pace, I was sure to clear the remaining 10 or so levels today. So I started it up, almost overly confident, and gave it an attempt. 1-1, one, one, but it's a hot mess. Oh, we're finally getting to the content. The Little Timmy Classic? Oh god, they meant, they meant actually hot. What? <laughs> What is this? And then a second. And then a third. I wasn't even close. You see, this level, Wall Simple, utilizes a mechanic that you rarely see in Super Mario Maker 2. Enemies in Lakitu Clouds. By putting an enemy in a Lakitu Cloud, it will begin to move horizontally back and forth, but not in the way you'd expect. When you move to the right and scroll the screen to the right, rather than moving past the enemies in the cloud, they actually move with you. This means that by moving right while they're moving right, they'll move even faster. And by moving right while they're moving left, it actually slows them down. They are impossible to outrun. Throw some enemies and all of 1-1 in the mix, and you're bound to have a bad time. Oh, and don't even think about using the shortcut pipe either. Oh. Okay, nice, nice, nice. What is this? What in the heck is going on here? Wait, 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 wait. Is this doable? Is this do what? What is this? I don't- <laughs> What are these guys doing here? Okay, well, we can't- can't do that. The whiplash this level gave me was almost instant. In a matter of less than five minutes, all of the bolstered confidence I had built up going into this level disappeared, and then some. It took me nearly 15 minutes worth of constant failure to really ground myself and begin to work my way through the stage, but even that seemed to be much more difficult than anything I'd faced thus far. Have I considered avoiding the dudes? Let me try this. All right, we're gonna be trying a new strategy on this attempt, guys. It's called avoiding the dudes for live number 69. Okay, so far so good, it seems to be- Oh! Every time I thought I had a viable strategy that would allow me to keep moving forward in the stage, I wouldn't be able to replicate it, and I ended up back at square one again and again. I was lost. However, I'm not one to quit something I've already started, so I took a deep breath, dug my feet in deep, and started to really figure it out. Slowly but surely, things began to come together. I began to make it further and further in the level, and I learned how to navigate my way through the swaying Lakitu clouds using the stairs as a safe point. After over an hour of attempts, finally, I managed to pick myself back up again and... Okay, this is it, this is it. Oh! Hey, wait a minute. I'm sending it! No! <laughs> it's on the axe, dude. Come on, you gotta give me that. What is that? That's a scam. That's what that is. With less than a pixel separating me and the finish line, I had overjumped and gotten taken out right at the end. Now, I could have let this get to me, and for a brief second, the idea of quitting this whole thing flashed through my mind. But I didn't come this far just to quit. Less than five minutes later, I found myself in the same situation, but this time... No! You get the heck out of here, Mr. Fireball! Not today, son! Get him out of here! We finished it. While I didn't get the chance to finish the game today, I had narrowed it down to the final two worlds in ten levels, which I decided was decent enough progress. With only two worlds remaining, I felt confident I'd finish it up the following day. 
Going into day three, my original hope was to finish up the super world. So far, in both days one and two, I'd managed to get through at least two worlds minimum, so my plan was to turn this into a three-day affair and be done with it. I think this summarizes my thoughts on the day as I make my way through the first level, a Swinging Claw 1-1 remake. Look, I played a really terrible level in the last one. It was actually, like, problematic. It, it became problematic, okay? There were little lava bubbles, they were in Lakitu clouds, I was losing my mind, I spent like an hour on it. So as long as we don't reach that level with the levels today, I'll be happy. Now, while that first stage wasn't anything too crazy, it wasn't long before I was hit with another massive obstacle, one that I hadn't even thought about as a possible stage previously. 1-1, one, one, but it's a coin-a-thon. It's a 30-second speedrun where I have to get 39 coins. Oh god, here we go. A coin rush speedrun. Much like the Goomba killing level we had done prior, this level had you collect every single coin present in 1-1, one, one, including the subworld, in just 30 seconds. What might seem like a simple concept on the surface became increasingly more complex the further into it I looked. It took over an hour of grueling work, but eventually I came up with a plan. Oh, that was clean, dude! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, everyone chill! Everyone chill! In there! First try! And just like that, I was done. After finishing the stage, I was feeling good, but because of the time it had taken to complete, I was a bit worried about my ability to finish the whole world today. It had been nearly two hours of time to simply beat two levels, and with the remainder of World 7 and all of World 8 ahead of me, there was no way I'd finish today at this rate. Looking at the ninja counts for each level, the 700 plus people I'd seen in the first few worlds had now dwindled down to 15 or less on most levels, which was not a good sign. Regardless, I pushed onward. The next level brought a fairly straightforward, but incredibly tedious no-jumping vertical stage. It was essentially the getting over it style level I had played earlier, but in reverse. After about an hour and a few close calls, I was out of there, and I was out of time for the day. Oh! Wait, this is huge. Get me out of here, dude. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm going home. We're out of there. Gaming. Now, going into day four, I had some real mixed feelings. While I had really enjoyed the super world up until this point, it was very apparent to me that every remaining level I'd have to work for. And while I was fine with the grind, I had expected myself to be done by now. As I booted up the game and prepped myself to dive into whatever was to come next, I could feel myself becoming almost nostalgic for that day one experience again. The first level today, still in World 7, was fairly tame. A 1-1 remake, but with rising and falling water, where I couldn't put my foot down. Unlike the last two levels I'd done, I powered through this one and was out in less than 10 minutes. This meant that all I had left was the final level in World 7, and all of World 8 remaining. Now, after the awful experience I had with Lakitu Clouds in World 6, when I saw them here again, my initial thought was fear. Fortunately for me, this level was much more straightforward. Sure, there was a lot going on in the screen, but with a much better understanding of these mechanics, I was able to figure out a consistent setup for each part of the stage and work my way through in just under 20 minutes. With two levels out of the way quick and staring down World 8, a familiar thought began to creep back into my head. Could this be it? Will I actually be finishing today? In the moment, it felt so achievable. One world, five levels. That was all I needed to be freed of this weird 1-1 shaped purgatory. So, without thinking twice, I barred straight into World 8 and jumped right into my first stage. Alright, let's get started. Here we go, the first level of World Star World. World 1, the 8th. 1-1, one, one, but you can't see Mario. And this... This was a nightmare. I want you to imagine the level that was just played. You see all of those different spells and projectiles flying everywhere? Imagine what the level would be like with them gone. Now imagine what the level would be like if Mario was gone. Which one do you think would be harder? Projectile spam everywhere or absolutely nothing? Don't worry, I'll give you a moment. Now if you said the former, I've got bad news for you. Welcome to the world of 1-1 one, one, but you can't see Mario. A Super Mario Bros. 3 auto-scroller where Mario exists on the edge of reality, right here. If you can't see him, that's intentional. On this level, he lives so close to the death plane, even the slightest bump against anything means that your game is over. Mess up a jump on the stairs? Too bad. Jump too early and hit a pipe? Try again. Fail to dodge an enemy that's just walked off screen? Game over. For the next four hours of my life, 
this was my reality. Usually when I try to do content like this on stream, I try to limit myself to just two to three hours max per day, so I don't burn out and can save it for the next time if I need to. But with this, things were different. At its core, this level was 1-1, a stage that doesn't even take 30 seconds to complete normally, which meant that any attempt I did could have been the one that finished it. And yet, as the hours passed, the clear remained elusive. The hours began to add up, yet I still had nothing to show for it. However, as the day grew late, I had a breakthrough. With a level like this, there's bound to be no strategy, right? How could I possibly develop a game plan for a level like this when I can't even move out from the left side of the screen due to the auto-scroll? I've got one word for you. Pigtails. In Super Mario Maker 2, you can choose to play between four characters. Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Toadette. While the first three characters have pretty similar models in the Super Mario Bros. 3's theme, the fourth one, Toadette, has one key difference. Pigtails. Now in 99.9% .9 of cases, these pigtails don't affect the game in any way, but fortunately for me, this was part of the 0.1%. My chat and I found out that if I played as Toadette and then faced to the left, the very edge of her model would show up on screen in the form of a thin black line when I jumped. Uh, can I use Toadette's pigtails? I actually don't know. I doubt it, but maybe. One of- maybe one of the one times that the- the hitbox is actually broken. Wait, because it sticks out, I mean... Wait, let me see, actually, I gotta see- I, I gotta know, I don't think so, but if that works, that would be sick. No, it doesn't work. I mean, it kinda- wait, no, it kinda does when I jump! Wait, hold up. No, wait, wait, you can actually see it. Look at this. This is- this might be five head. Look, when I jump, it's subtle. But do you see it? Do you see it? You can see it. <laughs> it's on the screen, dude. <laughs> you can see it. Like, just the very, like, it's like one pixel. See it? No? Let me zoom in and slow it down for you. Now, this was a good start, but it, it wasn't nearly consistent enough for me to get the clear. That's when we figured out strat number two. Corner boosting. Corner boosting is a strat that's commonly used by people trying to optimize a world record on a level. The way it works is simple. By jumping at the right time against a block, instead of hitting it like you would normally, it instead pushes you out to the side, forcing you forwards in the level. Because of how auto-scroll worked on this stage, if I could corner boost Toadette on the row of blocks at the beginning of 1-1, it might just be enough to see the model on the edge of the screen. This would allow me to time my jumps better and give me more room if I happen to hit something while jumping. It took a bit, but after a few tries, I was able to do it! Let's try it. Okay, you can see her on the screen. Permanently now. That's how you know it worked. You can see the edge of her pigtail. Using this strat, I could now see not only the edge of Toadette's pigtails, but almost the entire shadow of it, permanently. While it might not seem like much, it was a night and day difference to me. Using these two strats, I was quickly able to make my way through and snag a clear after nearly four hours of attempts. Okay! Oh, we're in there! The toad attack! Corner boost gets the job done! Get me out of here! I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Exhausted and having spent double the amount of time I intended to today, I wrapped up the stream and went to bed. With only four levels left, surely I'd finish it on day five. After taking some much-needed time to recover from the monster that was day four, I came back a week later ready to finish this. At this point, there were only four levels left, and even on a rough day four, I had finished three, so it definitely seemed achievable. I knew I'd psych myself out if I thought about it too much, so I quickly jumped into the first level of the day, the second of World 8. 1-1, one, one, but it's frozen over. After a rough first level in World 8, I went into this stage with my guard up, but surprisingly, it wasn't that bad. Ice physics can be annoying, and some of the jumps were a bit tight, but it was definitely doable. It even had a checkpoint. Wow, there's a checkpoint already on this level? This level's very, very generous. Within 10 minutes, I was done. Now, I was really feeling like today would be the last day. Feeling on top of the world, I wanted to push on while the morale was high, so I loaded into the next stage of World 8. 1-1, one, one, but it's a flight course, a Super Mario World cape-themed level. Now, I just want to preface this by saying I'm already bad at using the cape. I never played Super Mario Maker 1 or Super Mario World until I had gotten into Mario Maker 2, 
So, all of my experience using this power-up comes almost exclusively from the few stages that utilize it in Mario Maker 2. But, even if I was the best cape-flying player in the world, this level would still be insanely tough. Much like all of the other levels that prove themselves to be incredibly difficult, this level looked simple on the surface. It's just 1-1, one, one, so wouldn't I just be able to fly over everything? Well, not quite. With a lowered ceiling, any attempts at that would be met with a swift bonk. Oh, and not to mention the clear condition, too. The second my foot touched the ground, the clear condition was over, and I had to try again. Also, I mean, just look at these ending stairs. Oh, this part in particular is stupid, though. This one's gonna make it- this is gonna make it really hard. This is gonna be- this is actually gonna be so hard, dude. How do you do- what- how do you do this crap? What the heck is that? This meant that everything had to be perfect. Even if I somehow managed to make it to the end, I also had to perfectly navigate over the tiny gap at the top of the stairs to hit the goal. So, I got to work. However, things were different this time. As the hours passed and I tried over and over and over again, I wasn't making any progress. I had a few promising runs, but I couldn't figure out a way to get things consistent. Playing a hard level is one thing, but playing a hard level and feeling like you're still at square one after spending hours of your life on it? That hits different. The timer continued to climb. 12 hours, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and yet I was still stuck. Chat began to question if it was worth it for me to even beat the level. No one will know you didn't do it. Isn't there a better use of your time? I began to question not only if it was worth it, but if it was even possible for me. Coming into the 2D game much later than everyone else in the community, I didn't really have much of a reputation for being good at the game in the same way those around me did. Maybe I should quit and stay in my lane with something a bit easier. I wanted to beat this level so incredibly badly, but... With no progress to show for the hours put in, except for a few lucky runs that made it towards the end? I knew it wasn't gonna happen. So, I threw in the towel. That is, until day six. One of my biggest personality strengths and weaknesses is my persistence. If I start something, I refuse to quit it, sometimes to my own detriment. And this was no exception. I had put in over 17 hours of work at this point, and I had finished 37 out of the 40 levels in this super world. Over 90%. I didn't start this just to quit right at the finish line, so I came back a week later, determined to finally put all of this to rest. My chat and I decided it'd be best to start with the other stage before returning to the Cape One, and I agreed. It felt only fitting to save one of my biggest battles until the very end. So I booted up the next one. 1-1, one, one, but it's painful. After all I'd been through thus far, I sincerely doubted that it could be more painful than some of the other stages I'd played, but I went in expecting the worst. What I found was a technical P-jumping stage. Now, I'm not a tech god by any means, but I do consider P-jumping to be one of my strong suits, so I went in feeling good. The level was tricky, sure, and it required me to figure out unique pathing for a few puzzling sections, but in just about an hour, I was done. And then there were two. Since I had to save the castle stage for the end, it meant that there was no other option for me. It was time to return to the cape stage. As I loaded up the level again for the second time, I had a rush of emotions flooding my mind. Confidence that I could do it again, doubt that I wasn't good enough, fear that I'd be stuck here again, and adrenaline that this might be the end. Today though, things were different. At 18 hours, 33 minutes on the clock, I began attempts. At 18 hours, 55 minutes, Oh, what the heck we're gaming? What out of nowhere gets the clear? Holy buckets! What? <laughs> what? I didn't expect that one to happen. It just kind of, it just kind of worked out. That was pretty huge. What? <laughs> Dude, what? After pouring hours of my life into this level and fighting what felt like it was an impossible to win mental battle against myself, I had done it in only 22 minutes on my second day of attempts. It truly felt like a weight had finally been lifted from my shoulders. That is, until I realized that this was only level 39. There was still one level to go. Apprehensive of what might lay ahead, I took a moment to clear my mind, take a deep breath, and with only one life remaining, load into the final stage in the entire super world. 1-1, one, one, but it's the credits. Was this it? Had I done it? Surely there'd be a curveball here, right? As the level went on and on, it became increasingly apparent that I had made it through, but I refused to put my guard down until I touched that final flagpole. And then... Are we done? Are we done? We did it. Stop the timer! It's over! 19 hours, 3 minutes, 36 seconds. 
We finished all 40 levels in 1-1 one, one World. I had done it. After nearly 20 hours of work, multiple mental battles with myself, and thousands of attempts across all 40 levels, I had beaten 1-1 one, one in every possible way known to man, and then some. If you had asked me all the way back on day one when I originally decided to do this, if I thought it'd play out this way, I would have pointed and laughed at you. So, what have we learned? Even the simplest level in all of Super Mario Maker isn't to be underestimated. Thanks for watching. All clear.